4,000 at the restaurant or and $1,000 if you could buy it straight from the source. This is my very first time in a wine shop. No cap. So just, oh, oh, there you go. Oh! All right, I'm not gonna lie. A nice bottle of wine always felt inaccessible to me. I imagined it was for people like this and this, but with LeBron James promoting it as part of a healthy lifestyle, how can we not look into it? So we sit down with wine expert David Choi from Magna Carta Cellars, and we'll talk about everything from cheap versus expensive, red versus white, discuss why wine is the future, and also how Asians can be respected in an industry rooted in Europe. If you like wine or wanna learn something about it, then hit that like button right now. Let's go. All right, we are sitting down with the winery owner from Magna Carta Cellars, David Choi. Today, you are gonna be explaining to us why Asians should drink more wine. You're gonna be breaking down everything about wine, which is great because I'm not gonna lie, my knowledge base is like a zero out of 10. Well, I'm taking you guys from high school straight to the pros. You're gonna be in the NBA once we finish today. We have two different types of cuisines here. We have Korean food from Boca right here, which is gonna be your more pungent, more flavorful, a little bit spicier foods. And then on our left side, we got Joe's Ginger Shanghainese food, which is obviously a lot lighter. We're gonna make sure everything complements each other. We're looking for the perfect pairing between wine and food, between the flavors, savory, sweet, richness, opulence. We're gonna see it all. So we are gonna learn why Asians should drink more wine. We're gonna be able to break down what are different wines, and we're gonna learn how wines pair with different foods. And we're gonna do it in a way that it's not too technical, it's in everyday terms what we live in in this world. Yo, I've been wanting to get into wine because I know that a lot of the NBA players, LeBron, Chris Paul, Carmelo, they're super duper into wine, like 10 out of 10 level. So I figure if they're at a 10 out of 10, I can at least be at a three. All right, you guys, before we get into some pairings, I got some super basic questions for you, David. Sure. What is wine? Wine is a fermented grape that is processed through that turns into alcohol that you can drink and consume. Okay, but these grapes are not the grapes from the grocery store or are they? They are similar to those ones that you purchase and you want the same flavors, but they're different grapes. These are wine making grapes. When it comes to being Asian and we have like rice wines and stuff, is that truly wine or does it have to have grapes? So you could call it a wine, but it's called a rice wine, right? So wine is generally produced out of grapes. And what we have here is red wines, white wines, sparkling wines, but broken down a little bit more. Um, you guys probably know grape types, Cabernet, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc. But what we have is the regions where they're from. We have Champagne. Grapes have to be from Champagne, France for it to be called Champagne, or it's called sparkling wine, Burgundy. Simplest term, Burgundy. Red Burgundy is Pinot Noir grapes. White Burgundy is gonna be Chardonnay. And correct me if I'm wrong, Burgundy is a place. Burgundy is a place in France. Okay. So then we have Sancerre. So broken down, Sancerre produces Sauvignon Blanc grapes. Okay, it's starting to get over my head. Uh, but let's, let's, let's power through it. We gotta taste it. Right, 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 right. We gotta do so our you first guys, pairing. We do have a Grand Cru Champagne from Jacques Delos, one of the Great producers. I think he's the LeBron James of champagne right now. The greatest artist. Seafood always goes well with champagne. And we have a chicken dumpling. You don't want anything that'll overpower what you're eating, right? So like if something's a little lighter, like seafood doesn't have that full flavor, texture, fatness okay. that you have like in a steak or beef. How does somebody that is Asian end up a master winemaker and wine expert. Typically we're thinking a European person for sure. Well, it does take a lot of years and you know, there's a lot of education that goes behind it. But for me, it's all started in a wine store. I was tasting hundreds of wines every week and really that defined my palate. I took a passion into Bordeaux and that's sort of my uh, background in wines and that's why Magna Carta is a, you know, left bank Bordeaux blend. I spent a lot of time in France six, seven times a year, every year, visiting the vineyards, meeting the farmers, the winemakers, really learning the techniques and styles. We just had to let the people know your credentials, that's all. All right, DC, so with the food and the wine pairing, do you drink it first or eat first and then drink? I would always say we gotta toast first okay. and celebrate life, right? Okay. Right. Is wine there a word to say cheers? I just drank, but All yeah. Right. <laughs> I haven't drank a lot of champagne in my life, but that's the best champagne I've ever had. Wow. So as far as champagne, I don't have to swirl it like I see people do with red wine. You can't, I mean, you can actually get into it Stick and get your, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't really see a lot of wine, you know, in Korea anyway. Wine is super expensive. 
uh, just because of the taxes to bring in the wines, especially from America. There's no wines being produced uh, in Korea. Growing up, being Korean, and obviously soju is like super, super popular now. Everybody's drinking it. Is yeah. there some sense when you see all your Korean friends drinking soju, you're like, guys, just try the wine, man. If you look at the different things that we have on the table, sake and soju just wouldn't pair with a lot of these things, like uh, as, as well as wine. Got some chicken dumplings here. I took a bite of the dumplings, we're gonna take a sip of the champagne. Ooh, that's good. This is an expensive bottle of champagne. This is not your $12 <laughs> Andre's from the grocery no, store. No, this is, this is the, the highest, $650. Bro, that is more expensive than Ace of Spades. Oh, you know, We're talking about Jay-Z's oh, wine. How do I describe how much better this is than Andre's Spumoni? So, first thing off, it's not as sweet. Uh, Andre uses it, it's a little bit sweeter in uh, taste profile. Uh, this, you get some apple notes uh, for me. It's a, you know, a creamy texture that you would get. It goes really well with that chicken dumpling. Oh. It enhanced the <laughs> yeah. flavor. Yeah. It almost was like a salt of the mouth. All right, moving on to our next pairing. We have our first red wine and it is your wine, Magna Carta. Magna Carta. Let's check it out, man. Yeah. So Magna Carta is Cabernet based. You guys know Cabernet grapes? I do not know. I so mean, Cab I Cabernet, by the way, is a breed of grape. It is. Broken down a little bit more technically for you guys. This has Cab Merlot, Cab Franc, and Petit Bordeaux in it. So it's a mix, is that usual? That's a Bordeaux blend. Okay. So Bordeaux blends generally have five grapes, including Malbec. This is, uh, for this year, we didn't use any Malbec in it. The grapes come from vineyards and partners that I work with in Napa Valley. And you did not name this after Magna Carta, Jay-Z's album. I did not, <laughs> but we can call it the Holy Grail. Most people, know that like red wine kind of goes with beef or steak. Your wine pairs well with Korean kalbi. It does. Uh, the fatness in the uh, short rib goes really well with the richness in the Cabernet. For this one, we're gonna take a bite of the kalbi short rib prior to drinking your Magna Carta wine. Always give it a little spin, a little wrist action there. Then very nice, Andrew. Mm -hmm. So generally, you don't want anything with like kalbi that has super high tannins in it which means uh, Cabernet has a lot of tannins, which is that dryness that you feel. You know, older the wines, the, the tannins definitely soften up, which, you know, makes it a great pairing with uh, Korean barbecue, you know, uh, steaks. Uh, it's very versatile at this age. It's $100. I think this complements the flavor a lot better. First time you've seen this. We've eaten a lot of Chinese food, but we've never had wine with it. What can people expect, man? So, rich. I mean, you guys just taste it, right? Dark fruit flavors. I felt plum. the fruit. The yeah, fruit yeah, yeah. is in there deep. Yeah. Why do you think all these athletes are drinking wine now? The art form behind this really um, to see like a Dwayne Wade uh, create his own wine. You know, once you get into wine, it's addicting. You guys are in the sneakers, right? Art is another one of those because it's a, it's a limited supply. Mm. You know, once you drink it, that comes off the market. All right, so for our next pairing, we have a white wine with our pork dumplings. We have Shaolong Baos, and then we have the Shenzhen Baos. Why the Sancerre? It always goes well with pork. Uh, it's a great filling. Uh, the acidity in the Sancerre Sauvignon Blanc always goes well with that. I'm a little bit of a fan of um, like maybe wetting the mouth with the wine prior. Coating, yes. That's, it. hey man, I'm already developing my wine there styles. You go. Little minerality, yeah. you know, uh, that's uh, the profile of uh, Sancerre. Yeah, it did totally like wash that my yeah. palate down right there. Yeah. It kind of helped break down the fat. Especially with the Shaolong Bao because mm. that gelatin is pretty is. caloric. This is the first time uh, I'm doing these pairings as well. So it's always a learning process in wine and you're always trying to, you know, find that great pairing. This is a uh, Shenzhen Bao. This is a more pan fried bao with a similar juice in the middle. I mean, for me, I, I thought the other pairing was a little bit better. I thought possibly this could actually pair with a red one. Uh, you know, it has a little bit more richness to it. If you're eating Shaolong Bao's, XLB's soup dumplings, get the Sancerre. All right, we got the Spam Kimchi Fried Rice from Boca, and we're gonna be pairing this with the Chardonnay. Chardonnay is very good with savory foods, right? Mm. So it actually does wash it down and pairs really well with Spam. For our fifth wine on this Asian food pairing, we've got a very trendy wine in the past five years, Rosé. Rosé is basically, you know, you leave the grape skins in, uh, you know, when you're pressing, leaves it in a little bit, gives it that, that hint of pinkish color in there, and then those grape skins are taken out. It's basically a white wine with some red wine in it. Rosé. Rosé. And you're saying we're pairing this with the Korean fried chicken drumsticks and wings. High acidity, which cuts through a lot of the fat. Rosé and Korean fried chicken. The popularity in Rosé has grown over the last 
you know, 10 years. It's great to have on a summer day, chill. It's great mm. with food as well. I remember Jay-Z talking about rosé 10 years ago. No, he sets trends, so, you know, uh, whatever he says. <laughs> he made us know, all wear button ups. Button -ups. <laughs> oh my goodness. I yo, wore a button up back yo. then. The rosé that you're having doesn't overtake the chicken, doesn't, even though mm. there's a lot of fat skin, there's layers in it, it cuts through clean. All right, you guys, yep. our sixth and final wine for our Asian food pairing. The one and only Chateau Mouton Rothschild. Is it from the Rothschild, it's the family? Rothschild family? It's the Rothschild family. Yo! Shout out to Jay Electronica. The Illuminati. Yo, this is the most expensive wine. $1,000 <laughs> at the restaurant. Oh, at a restaurant? Oh, this would be about 4,000. 4,000 at the restaurant Four and thousand dollars if you could buy it straight from the source. What can we expect from this? This is a Bordeaux blend. So they use Predominantly cab, there's a ton of uh, Cap Franc and Merlot in this as well. Why is it important to get wine, uh, air in there? Is it to mix it up? What does it do? Uh, because you want to get the aromatics and you want to be able to get that flavor to open up in the wine. Yeah. I'm not gonna like pretend like I can break it down to the most technical level, oh, yeah. but what? I can tell you, I can tell you it was very smooth. That's they all I layers. can say. A lot of layers. All this right here is a, uh, you know, 15 years plus of age. Dude, this is, Dude. The craziest wine I ever tasted in my life. This is the pairing right here. Thousand dollar bottle of wine with some LA Calvi. It works, it works. The it's most amazing. expensive wine I may ever drink in my entire life. What would you say to Asian people who are like, they're so used to having that rice wine, that hard cut with no fruit. And they're like, dude, I'm not gonna eat like something made from grapes. I mean, I think that's being sort of closed-minded, right? Like, you really want to open your mind up to try new things. All right, you guys, before we close out this section and we move on to our next location, what was your favorite pairing today? I think I go back to the first one, the chicken dumpling and the uh, Joxalos. All right, so my favorite pairing actually was uh, your Magna Carta Bordeaux with the Calvi. Man, that was like, that was hitting, man. Just to let you know, Hey, I didn't pay him to say that. No, he didn't pay him to say that. <laughs> All right, just doing this video so far, I gotta ask the question, why should Asians drink more wine? I mean, I think a lot of the benefits between wine, culturally uh, even, especially being here, wine is accepted at all, you know, sort of classes. Now, I understand that wine, obviously, you know, it's pretty much mostly a European thing. Being Asian American, like, did you feel at all as an outsider while trying to get into wine? I mean, you definitely feel it. Uh, there's nobody else that looks like us uh, that's in the wine industry that, you know, in the past, you know, decade plus that I've been in it. You know, we got to keep growing as a culture. It's going to open you up and just have so many different things for you to talk about. And I realize now that it's a really fun technical world to get into with a lot of depth. Now we're headed to Astor Wine over in the East Village for a very, very helpful segment for you to describe what you should look for when walking into a wine shop. Because I'm not gonna lie, I haven't walked into that many wine shops and I need to know the basics. We'll break it down on an easy basis, on an every night basis on how to choose a bottle of wine. Man, it's almost like walking into a sneaker store. Hey, <laughs> just get grown. All right, you guys, we are outside of Aster Wines. One of the best wine shops here in New York City. We're gonna check it out. So we're gonna talk about different wines for different occasions, what to expect when walking into a wine store. When we walk by a wine store, we typically do not walk in. Nope. But now after this video, I bet you I will. This is my very first time in a wine shop. No cap. All right, Detroit, we are at one of the biggest wine shops in New York City. This is one of my favorite and the best. One that I come to every time I'm in New York City. The layout is it's done by region, so you need to know where your wine is coming from. Right, because I see this sign over there and it says Italy sparkles. Three hours ago, Italy sparkles would have made no sense to me. <laughs> now, I get it, I can read it. All right, DC, what's the first thing somebody should examine when they enter an expansive wine store like this? I would think you would want to know what your the game plan behind the wine. Are you having it for dinner with your girl, date night? So the occasion is, I'm this Asian guy who's trying to get my Asian friends into wine. Normally we're drinking Heineken, Hennessy. We want to get past that and something else. What are we doing? I would look for quality wine that had great value. Spending a ton over your budget is not going to really be in play there. Hey, the first place I would take you to, looking for value, looking for, you know, a hangout, but having your, you know, educating your friends would be the Rhone Valley. It's in France. The quality of the wines that you're going to get for the money is always going to be the best here. Andazone is always great. 
They've been a great producer uh, behind. European Cellars for me is a great importer of French wine. So I know that this has, you know, value in it already, even without ever tasting the wine myself. You believe in the, who imported it. Exactly, I, I believe in their vision and who they work with. I just saw this label, it looked kind of cool. It has a mermaid on it. Should I get it? Not just the label, the label's, uh, yeah, with the pretty mermaid. Well, but that is how oftentimes a very rookie makes a read, right? They, they're like picking the wine off the label. I think 95% you go in, it's either the price or it's the label that uh, someone chooses the wine from. Should we do that or don't do that? I would not, but if you don't know anything about the wine, obviously you have to go off something. The two things I would look for, I would look for where it's coming from. It does say Rhone. The other thing, Bowler, the importer, is a good importer of wine. So I would take a chance on this. Everybody likes Prosecco. What is that? It's a sparkling wine from Italy. What should we be looking for when it comes to Prosecco? For me, I would look for this right here, DOCG uh, Superior. Just means it's a higher profile, higher vineyard. What you got there, extra dry, superior. You know, it, it, you know, it may be a little bit sweeter. All right, that's Prosecco. All right, the next situation that I have uh, concocted in my mind that I think a lot of people would find useful is like, you want to get a present for your boss. Burgundy is a great place for that. What you have there, you chose a Merceau. Phenomenal region for white Burgundies. Huh. I mean, I don't know anything about the import or anything like that, but I know Merceau is a great area for Burgundy. It would be something I'd give a chance. I chose this. This is something that we actually had earlier. If they knew anything about wines, they would know the producer just offhand and that's a red burgundy. How much is this running us? Uh, this is 55. All right, DC, we thought of a different situation. This one, you're trying to meet your fiance's parents. We're at Astor's Wine Cellar, where only the limited, uh, really allocated wines are through. So for me, if you're really trying to impress them, I would look at this, Lynch Bodge Bordeaux here. I think that would be well in the price point, 300 bucks. All right, immediately, me being the noob that I am, my eyes went to something with the coolest packaging. These are natural wines. Really, right now, it's a hot trend. Uh, again, natural wines. You wanna drink them fresher because they don't last as long, but they're gonna be unfiltered. So it's gonna taste a little bit crisper, fresher, like a fresh juice. So how, how do they make it differently? It's not being pressed with additional sulfur. It's one of the main differences, and it's all organic uh, grapes. Okay. All right, next scenario. I just turned 24. I'm literally buying my first bottle of wine, but I got a party of friends. We want to have a wine party, but we don't know anything about wine. What are we getting? You know, I would go to Spain. Great bang for your buck. Um, you get a lot of great wines for under $10. You have a couple of them here. You know, uh, Tempranillo, Chardonnay, very fresh. Your friends are gonna love it. Will pair great with foods as well. There's always the vintage behind where, so this is a 2018, so that's from 2019. I think after looking into wines, I realized that this whole world has very, very many, many, many different layers to it. What are some good resources, if you can shout them out, for looking up what's a good wine. There's Cellar Tracker. There's regular reviewers of normal everyday wine drinkers that you know taste these wines and every vintage of it. You've been able to increase my IQ very quickly. What is a path that other people can take? A high level wine store that has a lot of expertise. Choose a few bottles. If there's something, a style that you like, I would speak to one of these uh, wine associates here. Try a few different kinds and then try one that's not in your comfort zone. Yo, DC, man, shout out to you. This has been very fascinating, eye-opening. I'm not gonna lie, this was a world that I had heard a lot about, but it felt very inaccessible to me, and you just made it way more accessible. Yo, I hope you Thank enjoyed you. it. Hope you got a little educated. Yeah. I know it was a lot to take in, you know, one afternoon. You got something very special for the audience that you wanna tell them about. I'm giving away 10 bottles of my Magna Carta Cellars to the first 10 people that leaves feedback to us. Here's how you're gonna win the Magna Carta Cellars giveaway. You have to be 21 years and older. Leave in the comments down below a story about you getting into wine, what you learned, or how you got introduced to it. And then also leave your Instagram so they can contact you. All right, you guys, that brings us to the end of our Wine 101 video. Huge shout out to DC, man. Where they, can they find out more about Magna Carta Cellars? Yeah, you can see us on uh, Instagram, Magna Carta Cellars, or see us at magnacartacellars.com. We paired it with Asian food, we had different types of wines and we even had like maybe the most expensive wine i'll be drinking for a while now all right guys thank you so much for watching that video remember the giveaway we got more details in the description down below shout out to david troy from magna carta and until next time we out peace, peace.